Hello everyone, welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. This is part three of kind of the Gothic Romanticism uh, watercolor painting. I did a wet and wet scene. I did the kind of dry brush over it. And then now I'm gonna try to go for my darker opacity. I may implement gouache. If I do, I'll let you know. But I just put some fresh paint out so I can get some nice, strong mixes. And I'm gonna use Burnt Umber and Ultramarine to get us started for a nice dark, dark. Pull a little bit of water out. All right, so with this darker mix, I'm gonna really try to get these darks in place in the foliage. And then I'll have darker um, branch and trunk elements. I mentioned in a previous video, this is something that um, me and Joe Menza had discussed whenever you use almost you know pure pigment you can get what's called a, a bronzing effect which um, will kind of give it like a leathery sheen potentially it has different effects to it um, and I think some people will kind of consider it a no-no within watercolor but I want to get that um, dark opaque aspect into this to kind of get that contrast with the soft background. Now a lot of these edges won't show up because they'll be underneath the mat. So let's uh See what winds up happening. And use this little stippling for that. I apologize for the shower running in the background. The house that we rent, it's um, an old, I guess a Katiana style house is what you call it, where. Um, I think they also kind of refer to them as shotgun houses, but this isn't as narrow as a shotgun house. What it is, is that you'll have um, front door and back door, and prior to AC, opening up the front door and at back door would allow the air to, um, to flow through it to give some semblance of you know, cooler weather. I'm taking a card to scrape here to get a variety of textures. Anyway, so the shotgun houses, um, or just Acadiana style houses in general, they'll have the two bedrooms. One bedroom here you know, is the art room. And then between the two is access to the bathrooms, you know, kind of those two doors on either side leading to the bathroom. So we're really starting to build up these darker values. Um, I am going to bring, I've brought some bushes right here, but I think I'll bring some tree trunks here to kind of break up um, the symmetry that's taking place on the outer edge. So let's try that. This is the number four rigger. And this guy I'll bring in front. And 
then these fellas will wind up having branches and foliage of their own. I might even bring another tree right here. I will come back to that tree. Let me give this guy, these ones, their branches. We might do a little bit of foliage for them. I will say this, I started off this series, the first video, with kind of talking about the therapeutic value of painting. And um, I mentioned, you know, we had, um, you know, a friend from high school pass away, uh, from high school, college, whatnot. And um, we have some of our family members who aren't doing too well health-wise. and. I wanted to paint a dark gothic scene and I was gonna go very dark fantasy wise but um, I wound up omitting the darker of the elements like the subject matter which I think says something to the therapeutic value of painting where I had originally contemplated doing that in the painting but then just the process of painting had moved me away from adding those elements and making it super dark, if that makes sense. Which I'm um, very amazed by how well painting is as a healing tool, how art is. I just want super dark for umber, ultramarine. That is hammy. I need to get hammy and Percy on the video. None of them are in here right now. You know, in the last video, I said, you know, please excuse you know, Percy's noises because she had just gotten a collar with a bell on it. And she hasn't been in the art room once today. And then Hammy, who um He's usually in here too, knocking over boxes and stuff. He's in the other room, crying for attention. My fiance says that the novelty of the art room has worn off for the cats. That used to be forbidden for them, and then I started letting them in, and they would rush in and all that, and then. Now it's just, oh, just another room. I don't like the line variation that I got for this one.
at this tree as detailed as I can stand with branches that are weaving in and out. switch to the number one rigger, do that gear horn branch technique. Stipple, a little bit of foliage. All right, let's move to the other side here. Just layering some branches on top of the foliage that I put down. This path is going down along the water. Could put a little wood posts. darker elements. I'm going to have some trunks show through here. Using the hake, to kind of stipple very small round spots, which is a little difficult. To let those become trees.
stand up, take a look, and see how everything's coming along. It's going along pretty nice. I think we can use the rigger sideways for a little bit of dry brush. Darker stippling on the inside. I'm gonna do a dry off and see where we're at. All right, looking at it while I was drying it off, figured this area right here would be ripe for thicker foliage kind of let it pass over in front. Uh, part of me was thinking maybe a little cemetery right there. A reason for this path. do is, since this air is wet, scrape right along the edge, add just the teeniest bit of kind of light catching on it. So it's at kind of be the cemetery for this castle I was out in the woods. Should be enough to kind of get the point across. We can do little ground headstones if need be, or maybe a little bench that somebody would sit on. And 
then we can take our number one rigger and we can create a funerary procession. These will be people walking up. a little concept stolen from uh, was it Caspar David Frederick 17 1800s uh, German painter um, gothic movement I believe these figures will get larger as they get closer far back there. Arch. So people are marching, proceeding down along the water up this hill, up the steps, for the procession here, even make a larger figure set right here. I think I'll scrub, try to scrub that mountain a little bit. Not the mountain, the moon. I can grab a magic eraser. Magic eraser is uh, melanin foam, which is an abrasive. So it's not chemically reactive, it's just simply sanding the paper. Um, that's why melanin and foam, I think, is not recommended for, or magic erasers aren't recommended for cleaning um, dishes, cookware and all that, because you don't want to, you know, I guess, create those micro abrasions and then from there, get it into your food or whatever. But you can get a super large pack of the melanin foam for very cheap off of Amazon. Or you go to the dollar store and just buy one cut off the pieces you need and experiment with it. Get a little bit of raw sienna. Add a little bit of something to these guys. All right, I think I am going to um, you know, put a mat over it so we can see what it looks like. Let me pause real quick for a dry off. All right, we should be sufficiently dry. So I'm gonna sign it and put a mat so you can see what it looks like. Um, I 
hope you enjoyed and um, feel free to follow along with any of these tutorials. You can sign your own name to it. Love to see your results. Sign it right there. That'll blend in pretty nicely. Um, please consider you know, liking, subscribing, and of course I have the Patreon and other ways if you'd like to support this channel. And that'd be greatly appreciated. So as you can see. And there you go. Alright, y'all take care. Have a great day.